What is up, everybody? Welcome to the Fantasy Flex Podcast from the Action Network and Fantasy Labs. I'm your host, Chris Raybon, and this is your NFL Week 10 waiver episode. As always, I'm joined by one of the most accurate rankers in the biz, the odds maker, Sean Kerner. Sean, as we are recording this, the trade deadline is about to pass. Uh, curious, what is your favorite move so far uh, and this 2024 trade deadline? Uh, there haven't been that many, like, really good <laughs> moves. Um, maybe uh, Mike Williams to um, Pittsburgh. Uh, I, is there anything more important? Like, uh, Jonathan Mingo to the Cowboys is pretty useless. Uh, <laughs> Will Herbert to the Bengals. I, I'll actually get to that, but, you know, this week it's useless. Uh, but I don't know. Mike Williams is pretty interesting to me. I like the Marshawn, the Marshawn Lattimore oh, to the side, Commanders. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, just in general, it's interesting. Yeah. There's been a lot of moves uh, this trade deadline, a lot of shakeups, but uh, the Commanders getting a cornerback, I think that is going to uh, really help yeah. that team out. Yeah. All right. Uh, we'll get into our favorite uh, waivers for this week. Can't can't go with Will Reichert anymore for kicker because he Damn is it. on IR. <laughs> so yeah. pour one out. For him. But before we get started here and talk about all things NFL for week 10, a reminder that Sean and I have teamed up with DraftKings and they got a new way to play fantasy basketball and win cash prizes. It's called DraftKings Pick Six. Sean, you and I are both big NBA fans. We were all over Pick Six when it came out. And here's how it works you pick two to six NBA players, you choose if they're going to have more or less of a stat, you know, points, assists, threes, rebounds, all the box score stats. You lock in a lineup and you compete against your opponents for a shot at huge cash prizes. Now, DraftKings Pick 6, it works a little differently because unlike some other games, it's a peer-to-peer situation. So you're playing against other people in the market, Sean, and that's why I like to kind of target guys more than who are shooting ice cold or take Mm -hmm. guys less than who are hot because it's all about kind of going against the market. Yeah, exactly. That's why I love attacking assist projections for the same reason. Um, You know, I look at passing rates, potential assist rates, uh, the conversion of a potential assist to an assist. Uh, And yeah, like I love identifying players that, you know, they've been getting really lucky. You know, their teammates are shooting 90% on their potential assists and maybe taking their less than or vice versa, you know, a player where um, they're due for positive regression. But I think you can kind of buy a lot of value in doing that. And you're kind of going against the grain, which is also a plus when it comes to this format. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely love being able to play pick six and essentially play against, uh, you know, a full market of people on yeah. more than or less than. So, Uh, This week, you can look for NBA games that have guys who are shooting ice cold. You can look for guys who are just going crazy with their assist numbers, and maybe you take a less than. But, Mm -hmm. Sean, looking forward to talking more pick six with you in the weeks ahead. And a reminder, if you want to play, all you have to do is download the DraftKings Pick 6 app right now. New customers can play $5 on their first pick set get $50 in pick six credits. You just download the DraftKings pick six app and use promo code flex six at sign up. That's F L E X six at sign up. All right. Waiver wire week 10 quarterback. Who do you like Sean? Uh, I like Matthew Stafford if he's available, uh, which he is in 40% of leagues right now. Um, I like your guy. Uh, You'll talk about if he's taken, but you know, Stafford's been on fire the past two games. He has 275 plus yards and multiple touchdowns in back-to-back games. Now that he has both Cooper Cup and Puka Nakua uh, back. However, you know, two weeks ago, Cup didn't seem quite 100% yet. Last week, Puka got ejected early on. So he actually hasn't been with both receivers for an entire game yet. Maybe that happens this week. So I love his upside. Uh, our boy Demarcus Robinson's playing at a high level right now. Uh, so this is a game where it could be a shootout against the Dolphins. This is the third highest 
team total to open the week. So uh, Stafford's inside my top 12. He's actually my QB 11 to open the week. So he's one of my favorite streamers uh, for week 10. Yeah, I mean, you play indoors, you got your receivers back, uh, and you're finally going to have a full game, it looks like, of Puga Nakua and Cooper Cup. Because they, you know, minute one goes in, the other one punches somebody or something. Yeah. So just something ridiculous. But, hey, I don't know if anyone still had Demarcus Robinson on their rosters for these last two blow-up games. But, yeah, he was a favorite of ours. And then we kind of got turned around. <laughs> essentially like oh wait no it's actually tyra johnson oh wait no it's jordan whittington oh wait it's you know i think tutu atlo had a game in there somewhere uh but now it's just kind of back to the original uh preseason handicap that demarcus yeah. robinson uh was gonna have crazy value at his what was he going in like the 70s at one point in wide receiver but um yeah mm-hmm. nice to see him get back-to-back uh multi-touchdown games has anyone else even done that this year i don't even Back to back multi touchdown, yeah, I yeah, uh, so. receiver for receiver, yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah, nothing, no one's coming to mind, but uh, yeah, Daniel Jones is a guy I like uh, at quarterback as well. He's available in about ninety percent of ESPN leagues, so he should be on your wire. And uh, like the spot for Daniel Jones because number one, it's not a home game; they're overseas, so <laughs> you know Daniel Jones always plays his worst football at home for some reason. Good to see him get some some touchdowns last week, uh, even though they lost. But too bad he going couldn't convert this... a couple of those uh, two point conversions, though. But I digress. <laughs> yeah, I I don't I haven't liked the play calls on that. I mean, I remember yeah. the one I uh, am thinking about off top. He, there was like three guys in the route, and they just ran right in the like there was no. <laughs> the one like, the there was really no no yeah. option. Like the play broke down so fast and. Yeah, I, I, there's something up with their two point conversion play calls. It's just they're overthinking. Yeah. Gable's overthinking it. But going against <laughs> Carolina here uh, in a spot where Carolina just yeah, defensively not very good. You know, we know this might. You know, at one point they're probably the worst defense in the league. I don't. I don't know if I'd still call them that. They're a little bit healthier, but uh, not much pressure to speak of. Uh, not many impact impact players, and they've uh, allowed. 18 touchdown passes, only three interceptions on the year. So Daniel Jones has Malik Neighbors back. Uh, we'll see if Slayton gets cleared. I think he got another concussion. But uh, you still have the legs, and you still have Malik Neighbors. And Neighbors has been quiet. Uh, he's gotten some volume, but he really hasn't had his signature explosive plays. But uh, the way Daniel Jones threw that ball to Theo Johnson – I mean, if he could just uncork that a couple more times against his Carolina defense, uh, we'll be in business. So mm-hmm. Daniel, ja- Daniel Jones, a little sneaky. Just make sure if you're going to stream him, wake up early because this is the uh, you know early start. Mm. I think it's what? 6.30 a.m. Pacific, yeah. uh, 9.30 Eastern or not yet, yeah, 9.30 Eastern. So uh, just make sure that uh, you pick him up before then. But uh, let's go to running back. Who are you looking at on the waiver wire heading into week 10? Uh, it's Well, it's a pretty uneventful week for running back again uh, for waiver wire. Just no real big injury news where we have, you know, backup seeing a huge boost in short-term or long-term value. So, again, sick of my guys, the, the four backup running backs that should be rostered in every league because I think they have the most upside are Tyler Algier, Braylon Allen, Blake Corum, and Trey Benson. Um but we also have two uh, backups that are now the new handcuffs uh, for their team. It looks like Cam Akers took over Ty Chandler's backup role. Um, so if Aaron Jones were to miss time, it looks like Cam Akers might be able to offer RB3 flex value. So he's worth an ad in deeper leagues. And Khalil Herbert was just traded before the deadline to the Bengals. So he's presumably Chase Brown's backup. So he's a Chase Brown injury way of potential you know, RB3 flex value. So those are guys where... You know, you don't need to spend much or if any fab on them, but it's always good to stash these guys before, you know, the, the starting running back goes down and you have to spend a bunch of fab. So, um, you know, again, those first four guys I gave, I think they all have high end RB2 value if the starter goes down. So those are the the ones that I like stashing right now. Yeah, and Herbert is interesting because it sounds like Zach Moss is going to miss the remainder of yeah. the season. And... 
Travion Williams really didn't play snaps at running back all year, despite being active every week, you know, special teams, uh, RB three. So the fact that they traded for Herbert means they might envision him in the Zach Moss role, kind of uh, a little bit different because they do different things well, but uh, he could essentially be that, that RB two committee back uh, for the Cincinnati Bengals. So that is, kind of under the radar intriguing and then yeah i noticed that too that they just don't trust uh ty chandler out there in minnesota anymore yeah. so uh it's cam Akers if if aaron jones goes down but he's not leaving the field very much these days uh algier is the guy that i i was gonna mention uh you've talked about him a bunch but i just think you know he's still available in 50 percent of leagues and he should not be available in any leagues because <laughs> Bijan robinson as great as he is he's played 26 straight games now to start his career, injury regression could be coming. I mean, he's getting oh, 19 touches a game this year, I think. Algier's mm-hmm. still averaging about 10 touches, uh, 50 scrimmage yards per game. And he does play the Saints this week. He had 80 scrimmage yards against the Saints uh, in an RB2 role earlier this season. So, you know, you look at the schedule down the stretch for Algier. He plays – you know, pretty decent playoff schedule. So he's a guy, the only thing is he, uh, the Falcons haven't had their bye yet, but besides Mm -hmm. that, I I really think this guy needs to be on rosters um, because he's putting up some standalone value. And if Bijan goes down, I mean, he's just going to blow up. And we've seen him do it before. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he would be in your top 10, right? I think he'd be easily. Yeah. Depending on the week, but yeah, he'd definitely be inside the top 20. Like he'd be, he'd be, he'd be right there. Yeah. Uh, all right, let's go to wide receiver. Uh, not kind of like running back, not really much going on, but uh, there is somebody that returned from injury that you think should be on everybody's roster. Yeah, Quentin Johnson, uh, available in 83% of leagues, returned to action after missing a couple of games with the ankle injury and just erupted for four catches, 118 yards, and a touchdown. Uh, he, he's really having a breakout season, so people might have forgotten about him because he did miss a few games there, but – uh, this passing attack in general has been fruitful for fantasy. You know, Herbert has now thrown for over 275 yards in three straight games now. So this offense seems more fancy friendly than, to pass catchers uh, than we kind of anticipated. And Johnson's the kind of guy, he just has a ton of upside. So he opens the week as my wide receiver 35. So, you know, maybe you wouldn't play him this week. But again, he has, you know, wide receiver two potential going forward. Uh, Cause like I said, he's really broken out this season and might be even better the rest of the way. So um, the last week's line was great. And you know, I think he's going to have games like that going forward. I mean, people should be playing him if he's wide receiver 35. I, I don't know about you, but I really hate leagues with two wide receivers. And I, I know to say that. It's yeah. Just, <laughs> like, it's like, come on. It's the modern day NFL. Every yeah. team is starting, essentially starting three receivers. Like, why are we still doing two receivers and a flex? Let's do three receivers Agreed. and a flex. At least three one receivers, flex. So, half PPR. Yes, yes, yes. Like, full PPR gets crazy sometimes. Like, I remember when it, you know, back in the day when it was, you know, newer people were like, oh, yeah, you know, this is fun. But <laughs> the way NFL uh, offenses have just gotten so efficient these days. You know, if you just look at league average completion rates compared to, you know, 10 years ago, 15 years yeah. ago. It's 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 kind of weird. Then then Wandale Robinson can catch like eight passes for six yards or something. Exactly. And, you know, it's uh, <laughs> it's worth too much. Uh, but I'm gonna go with Xavier Leggett because I've been picking him up wherever I can. He's still available in about 70 percent of leagues. He's quietly had a touchdown in three of his last four games, four of his last six, and this is a highly drafted rookie receiver. Uh, on a team that traded their number one receiver, Deontay Johnson, a veteran, traded the guy who was er- an early pick last year that uh, Leggett was competing with for snaps earlier in the year in Jonathan Mingo to the Cowboys. So this is now the second half of the season. We're going to start seeing some of these rookies really take off. And Bryce Young even looks a little better. So, mm-hmm. uh, and if he falters, you still got. Andy Dalton behind him, a good matchup this week uh, against the Giants. He's inside uh, my top 40 as well. So he's on that startable fringe this week too. And even if Thielen comes back, I still think Leggett 
uh, may end up being the top target. Just, you know, look at his draft pedigree. He's, he's a lot younger than Thielen. Uh, and there's a lot of targets to go around in this offense with all the guys they're, they're clearing out. I mean, we're talking about Jalen Coker as like a, <laughs> like a, you know, factor in this offense. That's how much, you know, target share is up for grabs in the Panther offense. So, uh, yeah, Xavier Leggett, I, I think he's going to have a, a good second half. Uh, all right, let's go to tight end. Who do you like for week 10 on waivers? Actually, a really good tight end week. A lot of guys yep. are kind of emerging right now. Uh, but I, I'm going to go with Mike Gesicki, available in 86% of leagues, um, facing the Ravens on the short week. But he's just been on fire right now. Um, and I think he keeps rolling this week, uh, assuming T. Higgins could be out again. Um, you know, again, they play Thursday night. Thursday night so uh, it seems unlikely Higgins would be back by then. Uh, but either way, you know, backup tight end Eric All is also out. So Gasecki's is getting a ton of playing time, a ton of targets. This is a great matchup, you know, against the Ravens. Uh, this is a pass funnel defense. They've actually allowed three different tight ends to clear 95 yards uh, this season. So just everything's lined up for Gasecki uh, this week and going forward. But um, as of now, Gasecki's my tight end nine. So uh, he's a great streamer for this week. And who knows, maybe he'll. Uh, stay hot and be a you know low end tight end one the rest of the way. Yeah, hopefully uh, Jermaine Burton keeps missing meetings and that just gives <laughs> Gesicki more and more target share. Yeah, uh, especially with all out because that kind of just changes things in that Bengal tight end pecking order because now it opens up more in line snaps and just traditional tight end snaps for Gesicki. I know they don't like to use him in that role very much, but all was just so good you know, blocker, receiver, he could do it all that they're, you know, Gesicki was essentially only playing on pass down. So mm-hmm. uh, he, he has a bit of a higher floor now, even when T Higgins comes back, I think. Uh, I'm going to go with Taysom Hill again. I feel like I talk about him every time he's healthy, which has only been a few games this year, <laughs> but this is, should not be available in over 70% of leagues. I know he, it's he's kind of random because he's a 34-year-old Ex quarterback doesn't even have a real position, but he's legit uh, a fantasy asset. Like we've seen him finish inside the top fifteen, I think, each of the last two years uh, at tight end. Mm-hmm. And last se- uh, last week, five carries, five targets, uh, rushed for a touchdown, nineteen yards, and also starting to come on as a receiver. Four catches for forty one yards for Taysom Hill. Really? Like that's like usually he'll get like two targets and we'll be hyped if he catches like one, <laughs> yeah. four catches. Taysom, is that you? Yeah, he's a real and, tight end now. Yeah, no, I I think his like it's still he's not like a great route runner or anything like that, but it looks right. a little little sharper. And remember, he's been doing this now for you know, three four years. Yeah, at one point I think his official position was wide receiver for like half a year or, or even maybe it was a whole year. So. He's, he's out there running routes, and uh, he caught four balls last week. But you have a guy that can catch, can run, and last two games, pass attempt. This guy, I mean, he has blow-up potential, and just the way he's being used, even though it's it's volatile, it's kind of there's kind of like a volatile floor to it, though, because yeah. it's, you know, there's, there's – it's, every phase, passing, rushing, receiving. So yep. uh, I wouldn't be surprised if – Points per game, Taysom ends up as a, you know, finishing the year as a top top 10, top 12 uh, tight end. So uh, pick yep. him up. Let's go to defense special team streamers. Who do you like uh, this week? Um, I like the Giants. Uh, they're available in 92% of the leagues. They, of course, you know, they face the Panthers this week. Uh, always a great matchup uh, facing Bryce Young, although he has been looking better lately, as you alluded to. Um, but, you know, Giants, th- their defense, you know, Dexter Lawrence and Brian Burns playing at a very high level right now. So I think they should be able to get two or three sacks here. There's turnover upside, um, points allowed um, should be good here. Uh, so they open the week as my uh, defense number three, the, my third ranked defense. Uh, the, the team you're going to talk about is my defense one as well. Uh, but I think the Giants are also a solid option this week. Yeah, uh, the 
you know, they're overseas. So again, if uh, if you are going to stream them, just make sure you remember to wake up oh, early point, or yeah. pick them up or pick them up. You know, before that, you know, some uh, I sometimes cer- certainly I just kind of wait to the last minute and don't get around to it. So I'm just pointing that out. It, it is an early game, but uh, I'm going to go with the Chicago Bears uh, where I can this week. A little banged up on defense, but uh, still a, a very good defense, I think. Uh, and you know that Arizona game notwithstanding, and now the Bears are coming back home. They're playing the Patriots, still available uh, in just under 60% of leagues. They rank as my number one defense this week, and it's because Drake May does look good out there, honestly, but he's still green. He's still going to take some some risks, and he's actually a better target than Brissett for defense special teams in fantasy because Brissett is just so careful uh, with the ball and they just, they're so run heavy with Brissett with Drake may, they're a little more willing to drop back and throw. You might get more sacks, uh, you know, more picks, things like that. So uh, yeah, bears, my number one defense could be some weather uh, in this game. Uh, That new England offensive line still is not great. And the bears are, Number two in fantasy uh, this year uh, in in defense special team scoring. So people have been kind of slow to realize how good the Bears' defense is, and then of course they you know get run all over by the the Cardinals <laughs> last right. week. But I still think this is one of the better defenses in the league, especially at home. So uh, against the Patriots, uh, top ranked squ- squad for me. Let's close it out with kicker. Uh, who do you like? To kick with our guy uh-huh. Will Riker now on IR, and I I remember we did miss at least one kick last uh, on Sunday Night Football too, right? Two, like you, we were right? just talking, yeah, two because we were just yeah, talking about he, he never misses. Hurt. I think because yeah. he was hurt. I, I'm gonna be the excuse machine for him because he was hurt. <laughs> uh, so yeah, unfortunately, we have to go with somebody else. Um, yep. I'm I'm gonna go back to my other. Guy, I think, is underrated. Chase McLaughlin of the Bucks, available in 65% of leagues. Um, at home against the Niners, this this is a very high total game. The total's at 50 and a half right now. Uh, the Bucks, you know, even though they're without their top two receivers, that they've been able to keep it close, still able to move the ball and put up points. So I think he should have plenty of opportunities here. But again, I think he's one of the you know most underrated kickers in the game right now. Um, he's only missed one kick this year, and it was a 50-plus yarder. So he's six of seven um, from beyond 50 yards. That's always a nice bonus uh, in fantasy. So, again, he's just very accurate. I think he's got plenty of chances here uh, and widely available. So he, I think he's my uh, number eight kicker to open the week. But I always love going with him. Uh, just a very solid, underrated kicker. Yeah, I mean, you're taking time to rate kickers. More power to you. I'm just looking at – no, nah, I'm just kidding. But I, I I like to just look at, um, you know, certain offenses are just very kicker-friendly, and one of them being the San Francisco 49ers. We know how they can move the ball up and down the field. So whichever Niners kicker ends up kicking this week, they're both available. Uh, Jake Moody, he may come back uh, from injury. He is available in seventy over 70% of leagues. And if not, it's going to be Anders Carlson again. He's available in pretty much every league. Now, there's been three different Niners kickers this year. All three of them are top six in fantasy kicker points per game. Matthew Wright is number two. He only kicked in one game, but he had three field goals uh, and three extra points. Uh, Moody is uh, number three. He's 12 of 12 on field goals, 13 of 14 on extra points. And then Carlson... In his two games, he is averaging the six most points. Five of five field goals. Didn't miss an extra point, but the Niners are going to just move the ball up and down the field. Sometimes it's just Brock Purdy might just hit one explosive play, and you know they're in field goal range. So, uh, especially coming off the bye, I think uh, McCaffrey coming back. This offense going to go up and down the field. Bucks uh, on a short week, so good kicker matchup. And overall, the Niners kicker, obviously, with all all those guys. And at top six, the Niners kicker is kicker three in fantasy. So if you just used the Niners kicker every week, you would be just eating uh, for your kicker streamers. So uh, Moody or Carlson, just uh, see what, what the injury report says on Friday, because I think Moody does have a chance. 
All right, that is going to do it for our NFL Week 10 waiver episode here on the Fantasy Flex. Be sure to subscribe to the Fantasy Flex podcast so you don't miss an ep all season long. And don't forget to check out fantasylabs.com for all of our fantasy football content, award-winning rankings, projections, tools, and more. You can find Sean on X at the underscore odds maker. I'm at Chris Raybon. And we're at those same handles on the free award-winning Action Network app. Until next time, let's get this money.